Hey guys, so I'm still in Palermo, which is part of Sicily. I figured out how to explain European history in about two minutes. Let me give it a shot. Um, ultimately, you cannot separate your European history from the presence of the Catholic Church. Um, and what ended up happening was, well, first of all, you go to any European city that has not been developed, uh, and you see at the very center, there will be a palazzo, um, go to Mexico, it's the same thing. Um, and the Catholic Church will be in the middle of it. So the push-pull in European history has always been the following timeline, which is the Catholic Church comes in, essentially takes over the government by claiming a divine relationship with the king. Uh, at that point, they're able to install judges, they're able to install almost everything, nonprofits, the hospitals, um, and give those Catholic-run businesses a tax-exempt status and therefore an advantage over the private sector. Over time, obviously, this becomes corrupt, not only because the Catholic Church, typically when they call on, on an army, whether it's Pope Urban II, it doesn't really, you can go back, you know, to the Crusades, or even more recently, when the Catholic Church would come in, they would kill everybody, women, children. That's one of the reasons why the Catholics are, I'm not gonna say inbred, obviously things have changed, um, but if you come to a place where, like Sicily, which is an island that was dominated by the Catholic Church, people do look similar. Um, because you haven't had that b benefit of, you know, something like the Arabs where they would go in and actually integrate with the population. Uh, so you go to Northern Africa and they, they look different, you know. Um, they might look a little bit similar in skin tone, but there's still a lot of differences uh, in height and everything else because the Arabs would try to integrate people when they came in. And all of European history at that point um, will get there, but initially Catholic Church shows up takes over the government. At that point, you have a Protestant Reformation. You have a pushback with the private sector because services don't get done. And the Catholics, by the way, when they show up, they usually kick out everyone who's not Catholic, uh, Jews in particular. Um, and of course, but it's not just Jews. It's everyone that's not sort of given approval by the Catholic Church. And a lot of that is because, um, it's, I mean, it's just because of the intolerance within that, within that sector. So that obviously gives rise in the Europe to partner Martin Luther, who then pushes back. So all in Northern Europe, you'll notice is different um, because not just Martin Luther, but you have Jan Hus. You have a lot of people that tried to reform this dynamic, but failed until Martin Luther. And ironically, by the way, well, it, it's, it might not be a coincidence because when the Roman Empire failed, the Catholic Church basically went into Germany um, in, in the provinces known as Bohemia, Bohemia, and in the south, in I believe Bavaria. And so it tried to create what's called the new Holy Roman Empire. So when Martin Luther was able to succeed, he did it in the heart of Germany, which is where the new base of the Catholic Church was located. So at that point, you know, he succeeded miraculously. Um, and at that, at that point, a lot of the Catholics had to go west. So you go into France, you go into Spain, you've got a weakening structure where this model doesn't work, this takeover of the government under a divine revela revelation or a divine affinity no longer works because not only Martin Luther, then you've got Napoleon and the French Revolution. The French Revolution under Napoleon basically destroys any legitimacy that the Catholic Church had at that time. It appeals to a completely different structure uh, philosophically and morally. So right around the 1700s, it's not just America that had the American Revolution. It was the French that started the whole thing. And that was one reason why Napoleon was so successful, because he didn't really have to conquer people. They were perfectly happy to have somebody come in who was a reformer. So you got Martin Luther, you've got Napoleon that changed, that changed all of European history. And here's the problem. When you kick out the Catholics, a lot of them went to the, to the US. That's one of the reasons why, not just, you know, in, especially in Germany, that's one reason why the United States Supreme Court is majority Catholic. Again, you've got this takeover and privatization of the schools, the hospitals, and all of that allows a rise in nepotism in a lot of those government positions, which is again, creating a backlash in America in the same way that it created a backlash in Europe. Because of that privatization, that it is not privatization, it's nepotism. Um, and of course, just the idea that we shouldn't, the government shouldn't spend its time arguing about abortion when you've got a deficit. And that's why the private sector rises. The private sector rises in response to a lot of these problems because things don't get done. Buses don't run. You have an informal system. 
Um, and of course, in Italy, you've got the mafia coming up. Well, a mafia is just a form of privatization. It's allowing people to get services that are separate from the government and also to receive protection that is separate from the government. So if you have a corrupt public sector where the Catholic Church is essentially handpicking people uh, to run the police departments, and don't think that's an exaggeration. Today, in my, my hometown of San Jose, Santa Clara County, um, the, I think the last, the, second, the one before, the, ma the mayor, uh, both of them went to private Catholic schools. They actually went to the same private school. Um, and so the Catholics still have a lot of influence, um, even today, in the year 2020, at that time it was 2016, I think. At that point, right, and again, this is in my, in my hometown, Silicon Valley, the age of innovation, Facebook, Google, all that, right? So you've got that. On top of that, the police chief went to a private Catholic school. That Catholic school costs like twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars a year. So that's what Chris Rock says now. He says that prices are the new discrimination. In reality, right, prices are a way to discriminate in favor of your own people. So what's happening in America is a reflection of what happened here, with, with Martin Luther and Napoleon, and then you have fascism because the private sector when it's competing with the Catholic Church, eventually succeeds, whether it's the mafia or a corporation, whether it's the East India Company, the Dutch, and so on. It, once it succeeds, it doesn't have a lot of competition. It's, it's, it arose because the private the public sector, the government, was corrupt. Then you have fascism. The trains don't run on time uh, because the government is corrupt. The private sector comes in uh, and then it essentially fixes the problem. But because they don't have any competition, they just beat the public sector. And, and they become corrupt eventually as well. Then you have fascism. And you have all these dynamics that keep continuing over and over again. So when you look at history, in Europe, you've got the North that basically succeeded against the Catholic Church, but not just the Catholic Church, just the idea of nepotism in general. They're, they are now more modern than the South. Today, right, getting away from the United States, in, in Eastern Europe, right, and, and in Southern Europe, you still have this privatization where it's not just the Catholic Church. It was the mafia that essentially replaced, you know, a lot of the private sector activity. And so the president, the former president of this country, Berlusconi, right, according to the judge, one of the judges that was shot in, you know, either in Rome or Palermo, was associated with the mafia, had mafia connections. You can't say that in Italy. Probably shouldn't say that too loud. Um, and he was one of the two judges that were shot who were from here, who were raised in Palermo, the heart of the Mafia. So this is, of course, about 10 years ago, I believe. And today, right, today, of course, you've got billionaires, uh, you've got the president of Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic that also has alleged Mafia ties, although we don't call them Mafia ties, we call them businessmen, right? We just call them business connections. So how do you get things done at the ports? How do you have, you know, all these sectors together, coming together in almost the same ways? That's why history repeats itself. It's, it's always a push-pull between an entity that wins the battle against corruption and then becomes corrupt itself. You can see that with, with the US. The United States beat the Soviet Union. This, they beat the East Germans. They beat the Stasi, the surveillance state. And then they became the Soviet Union. <laughs> because in order to beat somebody, in many cases, you have to figure out how they think. You have to infiltrate them. Uh, and so it's, it's difficult not to become them because you've constantly got this battle, not just for technology, but for primacy. And the real problem is what a lot of capitalists uh, say, which is no, there's no competition. You have a monopoly. The difficulty in the modern day is that monopolies are more viable or more legitimate because technology is, has taken over a lot of people's lives. Uh, and a small company probably doesn't have the resources to have lawyers battle on the IP front, intellectual property front, as well as on the security front. So that's one of the biggest problems now. But anyway, that's a short history lesson, I guess. We'll see how it goes.